Did you know that Windows 10 now has a sandbox feature? Coming up on ES Repair, I'll show you the pros and cons with Windows Sandbox and how you can use it. Hello, I am Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. Windows Sandbox is an isolated temporary desktop environment where you can run untrusted software without the fear of lasting impact to your PC. Any software installed in Windows Sandbox stays only in the Sandbox, and it cannot affect the host PC. Windows Sandbox offers advantages over third-party sandboxing or virtualization solutions by being integrated into Windows 10 and it also uses the host operating system as its base. Microsoft first introduced the Sandbox feature in their December 2018 Insider Preview build 18305. It's designed to function as a lightweight virtual machine in an isolated environment. A virtual machine, or a VM, is an emulation of a computer system based on computer architectures and provides functionality as if it's a physical computer. Their implementations may involve specialized hardware, software, or perhaps a combination. It was released to the public in Windows 10's 1903 feature update in May of 2019. Unlike a standard virtual machine, the Sandbox doesn't require a full installation of Windows 10. Instead, it uses an image of your Windows Core environment, creating a virtual machine that it emulates the Windows 10 operating system. Windows Sandbox uses hardware-based virtualization for isolating the kernel. It relies on Microsoft's Hyper-V technology to run a separate kernel to isolate Windows Sandbox from the host. Within the Sandbox, you can use the virtual Windows 10 just like you would your own, but with some limitations. Now let's say that you downloaded a program from the internet and you're not sure if it is trustworthy. Now the sandbox can be used to test a program. For instance, let's take my Firefox installer here. We're going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste it onto my sandbox. Now, as you can see here, I do have the Firefox installer. Now, if I'm not sure about the software, I can always put it on here, and then I can go ahead and run it. Now, as you can see, everything starts to work fine. So you can test if a program works in compatibility with Windows 10. And you can also check to see if you're going to have any problems with the software. In Windows Sandbox, you can even surf the web securely and visit those questionable sites whenever you get a link that you're not sure if it's who they say they are. What if the program contains adware or perhaps a virus or the website that you went to downloaded a virus onto your computer? If the program contains adware, or malware, or perhaps a virus that you see here, or maybe the, the questionable website that you went to uh, downloaded malicious software, now it would seem that your computer is infected, right? Wrong. All you have to do is close the sandbox. You'll see the message here. Are you sure you want to close the Windows sandbox? Okay, we're going to close it. Now, once the Windows Sandbox is closed, all the software with all its files and state are permanently deleted. When you reopen the Windows Sandbox, you start with a clean slate. As you can see, the virus is now gone. Now, if this sounds like a great tool to have on your PC, you may be in for a surprise. Currently, Windows Sandbox is only available on Windows 10 Pro, Enterprise and Windows 10 Server. The Sandbox is often used by developers and researchers to test new software within a controlled environment. However, you can upgrade your Windows 10 Home to Pro for about $100. But that's not all. Your PC must support virtualization technology. 
You must have at least a 64-bit dual-core AMD or Intel processor with AMD 64 architecture support, 4 gigabytes of RAM, 1 gigabyte of free disk space, and the virtualization enabled in BIOS or UEFI, and you must also have the Windows 10 Pro with the 1903 or higher feature update installed. Now it is recommended to have at least a four core processor and with hyper-threading technology, eight gigabytes of RAM or higher, and a solid state drive with one gigabyte or more of free space. To see if your PC meets the requirements, go down here in the lower left to the Windows logo, right click it, and you'll come up here to Task Manager. When you open it, you'll come to Task Manager here. Now, most PCs today will support Windows Sandbox, but the hardware needs a virtualization enabled in BIOS or UEFI. Now, to check to see if your PC has virtualization enabled, go up here to the Performance tab, and this will open up to the CPU. What you'll want to do is look down here in the lower right. Uh, this is going to show the virtualization and if it's enabled. Now, if your computer says that it is disabled, then your PC will not support the Windows Sandbox. Most cases, you will need to boot the PC into BIOS or the UEFI. Now, to do that, you can use the F1, F2, Delete, or the F12 keys, which are often used to boot up into BIOS, but these do vary between manufacturer models. Now let's check some of the other specifications. Uh, you'll go down here in the lower right and click on the notification. And then you'll want to go here to all settings. Next, you want to go over here to system. And on the left hand side, you want to go down to the bottom where it says about. Here, if you look down, you'll see where it says device specifications. Here, you'll see the processor the installed amount of RAM, and the system type. These properties need to be able to meet the requirements to use the Windows Sandbox. If you scroll further down, you'll come to the Windows specifications. Now, if this says the addition is Windows 10 Home, then you will need to upgrade to Pro from the Windows Store. The version should also show that it's 1903 or higher, if not, you also need to install the latest feature updates. Now, if you click on File Explorer, you'll come to this screen and you should be under this PC. Uh, you'll check the local disk or Windows C disk. Uh, this is the primary disk and it needs to have a minimum of one gigabyte of free space. Now, although it's not important, you can also check the drive to see what type it is. If you right click on the drive, go to properties, go up here to hardware tab and locate your drive's uh, model number. Uh, you can search this model number online and this will pretty much tell you if it's a solid state drive. Uh, if it turns out to be a solid state drive, it's a bonus. If your PC does meet the requirements for Windows Sandbox, the next task is to install the feature. What you'll do is go down here to the lower left of the Windows Start button, click it, and you're going to see the list of applications. What you'll do is scroll all the way towards the bottom until you see Wisdom Windows System. When you click on this, you'll see Control Panel right here. Click it, and you're going to come to the Control Panel window. What you'll do is you'll go over here to Programs, and then up here you'll see Programs and Features. Now if you look right below it, you'll see here where it says Turn Windows Features On or Off. Click it. Now you're going to see this window pop up. Now these are all the features that you can install or remove from Windows 10. Now if you scroll down, you will see where it says the Windows Sandbox. Now what you want to do is put a check mark in that box. Then click OK. Now once the installation is completed, you'll need to restart the PC. 
When a desktop returns, click the Windows logo and scroll down. You'll see this list here. And if you go all the way to the bottom, you should now see Windows Sandbox in the list. If you right click it, you can pin it to start. If you click more, you can also pin it to the taskbar. When you open it, you want to make sure that you choose yes because you want the software to run as the administrator. Now, when the sandbox first runs, it will be slow as Windows creates the virtual machine environment, after which the sandbox will work normally. Now, every time that you start the Windows sandbox, it will trigger a significant amount of CPU usage and disk activity for about a minute or so because the Windows 10 is creating this sandbox in a virtual machine on the fly. Once it comes up, you're going to notice that it looks almost like your original desktop, except for the fact you don't have none of your programs installed. Uh, you'll notice that all your icons that you have down here on the desktop are not there. Uh, you will see any, some of your icons, such as your battery, if you have a battery power on your computer, uh, such as a laptop or if, uh, some desktops if you use a external battery backup unit. Uh, you also have your internet, uh, your volume or your sound, your time and date, and of course your notifications. Now, one of the things about the sandbox is that your uh, Windows Defender and stuff doesn't work on here. However, you can install third-party programs to be able to test to see if it's gonna be compatible with Windows 10. In the lower left, uh, you're going to notice when you click on the start button that there are several applications that will not work under the sandbox, including the Microsoft Store. Now, this is not a major problem because this is basically just a test out of applications with compatibility with Windows 10. Now, if you're going to be installing some applications to test and see if they're going to work with your Windows 10 operating system, one thing you do need to keep in mind is that the Windows Sandbox here does not support any kind of installers that require the system to reboot. Because, as I mentioned before, when you close the Windows Sandbox, everything is deleted. Now, the Windows Sandbox does not support multiple monitors. Uh, it does not support uh, high dots per inch displays very well. But it's pretty much a way that you could test applications, surf the web, things of that nature without bringing harm to your computer. Now, the Windows Sandbox, you can also run this in full screen. And you'll notice that you have this taskbar at the top to where you can either hide it, shows you that your connection info, uh, this lets you know that everything's working good uh, with the link between the virtual and the host, uh, you can also minimize it, uh, you turn it back into a window, or you can just close the application. Now, when you go down here to File Explorer, you're going to notice that everything looks a little different. Even when you go to this PC, you'll see that you have just enough disk space. Now, this does fluctuate depending on what it's going to be using. But there is no direct access to this environment. So anything that you need to test, you will have to copy and paste from your desktop or your computer into the sandbox. Now you also have um, other functionalities. Uh, you can go into the settings and you can do tinker around with the different application settings of Windows and so forth. Now there are going to be some settings that you cannot adjust. So uh, not to worry about it. I don't know if they're going to fix these, some of these issues or if they're just going to leave it the way it is. Uh, mostly it's just so you can test applications and stuff. So as you can see, it can be a good thing to have when it comes to Windows 10 Sandbox. Now, Windows Sandbox won't tell you if some dodgy program is secretly sending information back to a third-party server or whether some other... Uh, pernicious activity is taking place without your knowledge. But as I've shown you, uh, if you go to a bad website or if so-called a Fran sends you a ransomware, it won't hurt your computer because it's all in this sandbox. 
And remember, you can close down the Windows Sandbox at any time. And when you do, you will receive that message. Whatever is stored within it is gone. Now, do keep in mind that the protection that this Sandbox offers does go away if you copy that hazardous file or that website from within the virtual machine here to your main Windows installation. If you downloaded something you're not sure about, you can always test it within the sandbox to help determine whether it's actually malicious. There are also some third-party sandbox applications that you can try. However, what Windows Sandbox offers though is the convenience of a free, secure sandbox solution built right into Windows. Well, I am your host, Mr. Fixit. Uh, if you do have any questions or problems uh, trying to get into uh, BIOS to turn on your virtualization, uh, you may need to go ahead and contact your manufacturer to find out how you could get into it and whether or not your computer can enable the virtualization. Well, this has been a presentation by ES Repair. Thank you for watching.